your mouth is melting. The one in your hand is not. Do you want to know why? <laughs> Interesting theory. Looking into foods that melt might give us the answer. Hey! Today, we take a close look at foods that go from solid to not so solid. Foods that get gooey and soft. Foods that melt. Lily tries to bake ice cream. Avery's heart melts her cheese. This is the best cheese I've ever tasted. And we go head to head in a grilled cheese sandwich duel. So turn up the heat. It's time to get melting. We love to cook and we love to eat. We are the taste buds. We can't be beat. We're in the kitchen and we're hanging out. All of that. Enjoy the fun. We're always turning on the heat. Food to the floor. There's always something good to eat. Hey, Matt. Hey, Lily. What you reading? Oh, this amazing book on desserts. Speaking of desserts, I had an amazing one last night. At the top was something called um, meringue, the bottom was cake, and the middle was ice cream. That sounds like baked Alaska. That's it. I want to see if I can make it. Chillbot, what do you have on baked Alaska? No, that's regular Alaska. We want baked Alaska. Chillbot, no. Baked Alaska, the dessert. That looks pretty easy. Want to help? Totally. Oh, but first. This recipe calls for a cake base. Oh, we have no time to make that. Well, we can always use a substitute. We have lady fingers. Hey, speak for yourself. I think mine are pretty manly. <clears throat> oh, you meant the cookies. Those will be perfect. And if we didn't have that, we could use pound cake instead. That would work too. And this loaf pan will work. Next, we need ice cream. Well, we don't have ice cream, but we do have raspberry sorbet. What's sorbet? Sorbet is frozen sweetened fruit juice or fruit puree. That'll work. Next, we'll have to take the plastic wrap on top of the pan so that it doesn't stick. We need overhang so that we can just plop it out. And we need to wrap it over too, so. Other way now. That. Now just press it down. Ready to scoop it out. Mmm, the raspberry sorbet looks delicious. Next one. Yay. Smush it with this spatula because it's bigger. So that takes the shape of the loaf pan. Spread it around like butter. All right. Could you help me with the lady fingers? Sure. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to lay it out. Mm -hmm. And we have to press them onto the sorbet. And I think we'll probably be able to fit four. Just squish it all together so it doesn't have any spaces. I can't wait to try this. Ta-da! Fold this over. And then it's back into the freezer until it's frozen solid. The recipe says we need four egg whites, but how are we gonna separate the egg whites from the egg yolk? Well, take two bowls, crack an egg, and then you pass the yolk back and forth between the two halves of the shell. The egg white just kind of falls out. Then you put the yolk into the other bowl and save that for later. It's very important that none of the yolk gets into the whites. So I put the egg whites into our mixing bowl, and that way if I make a mistake, I don't have to start from scratch. Here, you give it a shot. So I pass it back and forth. Nice. Yolk goes there. Nice egg cracking, Lily. All right, great. I'll put the shells in the compost. Let's start whipping. The mixer can hurt. Get a grown up. I'm going to start it on low. Then go high. It's foaming. Well, that means they're almost ready. Or angry. Next, put the salt in. And cream of tartar. Why do we have to put in the cream of tartar? The cream of tartar makes the meringue stiff. 
It's kind of like hair gel for the egg whites. Next to go in is the sugar. I'll just sprinkle the sugar in. Here we go. Keep whipping that, and after a while, it'll have peaks. And it defies gravity. <clears throat> next up. Well, next I'll preheat the oven so we can broil. Broil? What's broil? Broiling is when you cook a food at high heat from above. You know, in the oven. What? We're gonna put sorbet in the oven? It'll melt. Well, the recipe is called Baked Alaska. But sorbet melts even when you put it on the counter. How's it gonna stay frozen in an oven? Well, we're covering the sorbet with a meringue and we're only using the top element of the oven. So the meringue must protect the sorbet with science and special meringue powers. You don't know, do you? No. Hey, science whiz, how does sorbet not melt when you put it in the oven? You totally can't. It's scientifically impossible. Oh, unless it's insulated. Insulation is like a temperature barrier. Have you ever had a cold drink out of a thermos on a really hot day? That's because the thermos insulates or protects the cold liquid from the hot air. It lessens the amount of heat that goes from the air to your drink. My hero. All right, it's time to insulate me from the cold. It looks chilly out there. So meringue is the insulation. It protects the cold sorbet from the hot oven air, and then the sorbet doesn't melt. You learn something new every day. All right. Now I'm gonna unwrap all of this and then flip it over. Ooh. Take the pan off. Unwrap it again so that we don't cook plastic wrap. Ah, I made it really easy with the plastic wrap. Now we have to put the meringue on the sorbet. Well, we can do that through piping. I put the meringue in a resealable plastic bag. All right, then I cut the corner off. And that way I can control it. Cool. You can control how it comes out. Could I try? Totally, go for it. All right. All right. Here, and you can use the back of this spoon to get all the little holes out. Go in little tiny circles all the way around. Okay, so little tiny circles. Let's get broiling. Thank you. Ovens are hot. Get a grown up. Now, broiling cooks foods very quickly, so we gotta keep an eye on it. Now might be the perfect time to see how Baked Alaska got its name. Funny you should ask, Lovie. I'm on the set of a comedy that's all about Alaska. The dish used to be called Norwegian Omelette, but in 1867, a restaurant in New York City renamed theirs a Baked Alaska in honor of America's purchase of Alaska from Russia. And the name stuck. I just hope we finish filming soon. They decided to film all the outdoor scenes in the coldest place they could find. Winnipeg. <sighs> it's ready. Let's cut it to see if it's melted. The insulation works, but is it delicious? Sure looks good. Mmm. It's really good, Lily. The cookies work great as a base. I love the raspberry sorbet. And the oven might not have melted it, but I will. <laughs> Chillbot, could you please get me foodie file number 1028, the great thing. The meringue was firm and golden on top, but the sorbet was still frozen. It turns out the meringue topping does more than just look and taste good. It also acts as insulation. Like when you take a cooling to the beach and keep your drinks cold, even though it's hot outside. Might be time for another bite. For this and other recipes, visit www.tastebudstv.com. My location, the Cheese Boutique. My mission, get some cheese from melting. My qualifications, <laughs> it's cheese, not rocket science. How hard could it be? I'm just gonna go grab some of the orange stuff. Oh, 
Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm Avery. I'm from Welcome to Cheese Boutique. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, thank you. Do you have any of that orange stuff that melts? Let's start with this. Is that a cantaloupe? Looks like a cantaloupe. Tastes a lot better than a cantaloupe. Can try I try this. a piece of that? Absolutely. This is a French mimolette. This is wonderful. It's amazing. Yes. It's magical. This is the best cheese I've ever tasted. We have more. Can I try some more? Absolutely. Is this too much? This is five years old, Ontario cheddar. This is just pure magic. In cheese form. You think I could try some others? You can have whatever you want. Awesome. Oh, and just a little bit of that one. You are hungry. All the time. All right, good. Let's get you changed. All right, so what are we going to start with? OK, we're going to start over here. This is Parmigiano-Reggiano. That is huge. It's not only good on your pasta, you can make some great Parmesan crackers with this. Mm, it tastes really salty. Is it just cheese and salt? Cheese, milk, salt, and bacteria. That's it, the good kind. So what is this on the outside? It's dipped in wax, so it ages longer. So this, it's infused. It's a sheep's milk cheese. Sheep's in milk? Sheep's milk infused with black truffles. Do you know what black truffles are? Wait, so this is a sheep's milk cheese right. with chocolate truffles? No, no, the mushroomy kind of truffles. There's mushroom truffles? Oh, yeah. Wow. Big. I didn't know that they put stuff in cheese. Absolutely. Try that. It's going to be a little stronger now. Mm. And it should taste a little mushroomy. Oh, that is very strong. OK, next. This is a triple cream cheese from Burgundy in France. Triple cream. Triple cream. You see how rich. Are they rich. different kinds of cream? Oh, yeah. That depends on the milk fat content. This is like glorified butter. Try that. Mmm. That's delicious. All right. It just disappears in my mouth. Yes. It's just like gone. Yes. <laughs> really rich. So what's this one? Blue. This is like a medium strength blue. Okay. For some people who don't even like blue cheese, they don't mind this one. That's very different than any of the other cheese. It's kind of salty and tastes kind of old. That's exactly the case. But blue cheese was made by accident. By accident? A Frenchman, you know, he had a wheel, let's say like this, really white, really creamy. He left it in his fridge for six months or six a months? year. Or, or a year. I would never leave cheese in my fridge for six months. It would turn like that. And he came back, he cut it open, and he said it was blue. And he tried it, and he said, that's pretty good. So blue cheese, in reality, it was made by accident. I think it's one of the best mistakes in history. And that's how blue cheese was made. So, on to the next okay, cheese. Okay, on to the next one. I'm sure you recognize this one. Is that Swiss cheese? That's Swiss cheese. This is Swiss Emmental. I mean, there's different kinds of Swiss cheese. Absolutely. In Switzerland, in different regions of Switzerland, they produce different cheeses. And it comes from the Emmental Valley. So what are these holes in it? Like, where do the holes come from in Swiss cheese? Well, these are air pockets that the cheesemaker pushes air into the milk when it's made and it creates those little air pockets. So you see, the more air pockets, the better quality cheese you have. Cool. Give that a taste. Thank you. Mmm, that is really good. I think that's my favorite cheese. Wow, good stuff. But I'm a little confused. You talked about wax and aging, but how does that all happen? Instead of just telling you, I'm gonna have to show you. Oh. Let's go. All right, come on in. This is where we're aging cheese. This would be the most cheese I have ever seen in my entire life. And this is something in Europe, in Switzerland, and in France in particular, they age cheese naturally in mountains because there's a natural climate, there's a natural humidity. So here, in North America, we have to manufacture and produce that very same climate or environment. So make it like cold? Very cold very damp. You know, you age cheese to develop its flavor, to develop its character. And everything you tried out there was aged in this room. Wow. These are all cheeses we import. So we'll bring them in. Import. From, we bring them from Spain. We bring them from different parts of Canada, from Holland, from Italy. Wow. So is there any cheese that you make here? Absolutely. Let's go out and do some. So what are we going to make? Oh, well, we're going to make fresh bocconcini. Where's that from? Bocconcini, it's Italian. And Italian. Bocco, bocco means mouth. 
mouth. And bocconcini means kind of small mouth size. So that's what we're going to make, kind of small, fresh mozzarella. So what's this stuff? This is fresh curd. When you're making the cheese and the milk is settling, when it's cooking, what rises to the top is this, which is really fresh, soft curd. This is everything that comes up from the top, all the kind of, in a nice way, the leftovers. Oh, I like leftovers. We're gonna take a bit of this, just kind of form it into a ball. And with the warm water, you're gonna kind of make the shape kind of nice, kind of ball I shape. put mine in there too? Absolutely. It's really squishy. It's really squishy. <laughs> you wanna then put it very simply into an ice bath and you're gonna season it. Just season the water with a bit of salt. So. Go ahead. Get a nice big handful of salt in there. Does that add flavor to it? Absolutely, it's gonna add flavor to it. That's gonna settle now for about 10 to 12 hours. So it really firms up. So it stays together. Oh. And that is fresh bocconcini. Awesome. Bocconcini. Nice. All right, let's get you checked out. There you are. Oh, thanks, Afrin. My pleasure. Say, can I come back tomorrow? You can come whenever you like. You always have a place in here. Awesome. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you. Booty file number 102B. Wheels of awesome. I came here to find one thing, cheese that melts. But it turns out there are hundreds of cheeses. Hard, soft, sharp, mild. There's an amazing new cheese out there with your name on it. So put down the orange step and try something new. Oh, hey, Lily. What are you doing? I'm making Parmesan cheese crackers. Looks like you're missing the cracker part. Oh, it's a special trick I learned at the cheese store. All I do is put Parmesan cheese on a pan lined with parchment paper, pop it in the oven until it's nice and golden brown, and voila, Parmesan cheese crackers. Want to try one? Sure. Avery, you're a cheese genius. Oh, thanks. Hey. I thought you guys were gonna make grilled cheese sandwiches. Mmm, more cheese. And veggies. But vegetables don't melt. But they taste good. Well, my grilled cheese sandwich would taste good without veggies. I'll have them on the side. We'll let the sandwiches do the talking. I challenge you to a... Sandwich duel. I accept your duel, but first... Whoever makes the tastiest grilled cheese sandwich in five minutes wins. I want to see a lot of melting, but no rushing. Let's have a good, clean, safe match. Are you ready? Ready. ready. On your marks. Get set. Avery, can you please explain your grilled cheese making strategy for those watching at home? Oh, uh, okay, so first I'm gonna cut some butter, and then I'm gonna put that on the outsides of the bread. So when I put it in the pan, it doesn't stick. And then I'm gonna grate some cheese and put that on, and then I'm gonna cook it. You heard it here first, folks. He will be cooking his sandwich. Hands are sharp. Get a grown up. I'm back with Lily, who appears to be using some sort of white blobish something. What is it? It's bocconcini cheese. And why use it? Well, bocconcini cheese is fresh and soft, so I'm hoping that it's gonna melt faster. Well, we can only hope she doesn't melt under the pressure, hmm? Avery is now grating the cheese. Avery, can you explain why you've chosen such an unusual technique? Well, I'm grating the cheese so it melts faster, giving me an advantage. Hmm. Stay tuned to see if this technique pays off. A grilled cheese sandwich with something other than grilled cheese? What? Well, I'm putting some grilled veggies on it to add some more flavor, and you know how much I love veggies. Hmm, grilled veggies on a grilled cheese sandwich. Any secrets up your sleeves? Well, I've put some oregano for more flavor. And I'm gonna use 
use this Parmesan cracker to add kick to it. Using his own cracker against him. Mmm. This competition has taken a wicked turn. And go! How do you feel about your sandwich? Well, it turned out right the way I wanted it to. You can feel the excitement! Oh, as Avery is the first to turn! There's a beautiful flip! Avery's cheese does not seem to be melted yet. Is it game over for him? No, Matt. I'm gonna turn off the burner, and put a lid on top, and that way it's hot enough to melt the cheese, but not to burn the bread. Hmm. Genius or insanity? Well, mine's turning golden brown. Indeed. It's starting to smell cheesy in here. Well, we're gonna have to get these sandwiches on plates to see whose is the tastiest. Woo. All right, let's taste them while they're still hot. Mmm, amazing. Mine is the best. Well, you haven't tried mine yet, which, by the way, is spectacular. Mm. Not bad. It's a tie. Oh, it's okay, Mr. Sandwich. You're still the winner in my book. Mine took a little longer, but both our cheeses melted perfectly. That's because they weren't insulated. Huh? Well, the chocolate didn't melt in my hand because it was insulated by candy coating. Luckily, Fred isn't much of an insulator, so the heat got right through it and melted the cheese. Well, after I'm done this sandwich, I guess I'm gonna have to see how those little chocolate guys melt in my stomach. <laughs> Chillbot, can you please bring out foodie file number 102C? <laughs> Melting madness. The veggies gave Lily's sandwich great color and the Parmesan cracker added an extra kick, but I took my veggies on the side so I could have an all-cheese sandwich. Both were so good, we couldn't decide on the winner. Maybe we should have a rematch. For this and other recipes, visit www.tastebudstv.com.